we are all beggars. This is, this is true. Those are Martin Luther's last words. And uh, it's amazing because with all his intellect, devotion to God, and courage to stand firmly sa kanyang convictions, and considering ang mga accomplishments niya as a theologian, a professor, and a reformer, and marami pang iba. His last words are not filled with the bragging of all his works. Instead, it is an acknowledgement of his true standing before God, a beggar who's eternally in need of God's grace. He credited all the great deeds, not to himself, but to God and to God's grace alone. Last words are really interesting. As Warren Wiersbe said, and I quote, Last words are a window that helps us to look into a man's heart, or a measure that helps us evaluate his life. Pinapakita ng mga huling habilin o mga huling salita kung ano ang importante sa isang tao, kung ano ang pinakamahalaga sa buhay niya. And in the same way, 2 Timothy are Paul's last words before his death. It shows us what is important to Paul, especially now as we approach his last command for his spiritual son. And today we will see what he highly value in his life as we look into Paul's ultimate charge. Our text this morning is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. And these are the words of God. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. But as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Thanks be to God for the reading of His Word. We are now approaching the last chapter of the last letter of the Apostle Paul. And here we will see the last and solemn charge, his last and solemn charge to his young protege, Timothy. But before we get to that charge, it is important na ma-remind tayo at maintindihan natin kung saan nanggagaling si Paul at kung bakit ito ang mga bagay na naisulat niya para kay Timothy. Maybe many of us already knew na karamihan sa mga letters na naisulat ni Paul ay naisulat niya mula sa kulungan. Nakaranas ng multiple imprisonments uh, ang Apostle Paul, not because of any criminal offense, but only because of the persecution for his faithful preaching of the gospel. There are times na nakulong si Paul kung saan maayos ang condition niya. So for example, yung, yung una niyang uh, imprisonment sa Rome ay house arrest. Uh, pero eventually, pinalaya din siya mula doon. Ngunit siya ay muling nakulong dahil sa patuloy niyang pagpipreach ng gospel. And this time, in his second imprisonment, it was not convenient as the first. It's not anymore granted a house arrest. Instead, he was thrown into a place called Mamertin Prison. Isang underground prison sa ancient city of Rome. The Apostle Paul was secluded here for a couple of years before his execution. For years, he's inside this stone-cold dungeon with no windows, darkness surround him, and he has no sense of night and day 
posible na nakaasa lang siya sa cedar candila o lampara para makakita kung nais niya man magsulat o magbasa. And additionally, katabi ng prison na ito ang sewage system ng city of Rome. At dito sa madilim, malamig, masikip, marumi at mabahong kulungan na ito na isulat ni Apostle Paul ang second Timothy. At this point of his life, the Apostle Paul has accomplished a lot of things. Nag-preach siya ng gospel for many years, nag-plant ng napakaraming churches, nag-train ng maraming men for the ministry, at marami pang iba. At kasama, pa, kasama ng mga ministry na yan, ang iba't ibang uri ng paghihirap. Eh, sana man lang, eh, nabigyan siya ng maayos na retirement. Pero wala. After all those sacrifices in the ministry, he is now inside a disgusting dungeon awaiting his execution. Now, in spite of all those afflictions, ano ang nasa isip ng afflicted saint na ito? Since Paul is so consumed by the gospel, iniisip pa rin niya ang misyon na pinagkatiwala sa kanya ng Diyos, ang pagpapalaganap ng Ibanghelyo. At hindi lang yon. Iniisip niya rin yung pagpapasahan niya ng misyon, ang kanyang apprentice na si Timothy. Si Timothy na nakasama niya ng maraming taon sa missionary work at nakawitness ng mga paghihirap niya. Ngayon si Timothy ay isa ng pastor sa church in Ephesus and we've seen in our previous sermons na maraming problema na kinakaharap si Timothy sa kanyang ministry. As a summary, outside the church, there is the persecution of the unbelievers. And inside the church, meron namang various pressures from false teachers and fake believers. Napakahirap ng trabaho ito. And because of that, malaki ang probability na sobrang distracted at sobrang discouraged na ang young and timid pastor na si Timothy. And not just that, he's also possibly losing sight of what the Lord has called him to do. Kaya naman sumulat si Apostle Paul sa kanya to encourage him to be strong in the Lord and endure suffering and also para i-redirect ang focus niya sa calling na ibinigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. So, if you are in the place of the Apostle Paul, you are suffering and you know you'll be dead soon. And you also know that your young apprentice na siyang pagpapasahan mo ng mission is facing multiple trials. If you are in the sandals of Paul, what are the last words that you will give to Timothy? Now, what you will say or write at that point will reveal what is important to you what you value, what you prize. As we will see, Paul will not give value on his, on his comfort or on his popularity. What he wants to make sure is that the gospel will continue to advance even after his death. And the apostle knew that God's primary tool to advance his gospel is the faithful, by the faithful preaching of the word of God. Not by entertaining music or big productions, not by church growth plans, nor by celebrities, life testimonies, nor anything else in human invention. Not saying that those things are innately sinful, but I'm just saying those are not the primary means that the Lord chose to bring about the salvation of sinners and the sanctification of the saints. And that is why preaching the word was Paul's last charge for Timothy. Alam ni Paul that in order for us to see God's true work through the gospel, we must obey and esteem his chosen means in accomplishing his mission. And that is why he highly regarded preaching. Or we can say Paul prized preaching. And we must adapt the Apostle's heart towards preaching. And that is our message for this morning. We must prize God's primary means 
for gospel propagation, and that is the preaching of His Word. Dapat nating pahalagahan ang pangunahing paraan ng Panginoon para sa pagpapalaganap ng Ebanghelyo at ito ay ang pangangaral ng Kanyang salita. Now going back to our text, what are the truths found in those verses that we must consider in order to reinforce our prizing of the preaching of the Word? We must see that in the outset of the text, Paul charged Timothy in the presence of of God and Jesus Christ. What this means is, ultimately, Timothy will give an account of his preaching ministry, not just to Paul, but to God and Christ, the judge of the living and the dead. And we'll unpack more of that on our first point, the judges evaluating eyes. And we also see in verses 3 and 4 that Paul saw that people won't be able to endure faith, the faithful preaching of the Word of God. And their ears will itch for false teachings. But in spite of that, in spite of those negative reactions, Paul still urges Timothy to continue in the preaching of the word. And we'll expound more on that on our second point, the intolerance itching ears. Let us consider the first point, the judges evaluating eyes. In verses 2 and 5, may kita natin na merong sampung utos na ibinigay si Paul kay Timothy. But we need to understand na yung unang utos ay yung main charge, and that is to preach the word. And the other nine ay ang supporting commands under that overarching charge. Now let us now dissect the essence of the main charge. Preach the word. Sobrang pamilyar si Timothy about this concept. About the concept of Preaching. It means to publicly proclaim a royal message like an imperial herald. Imperial heralds are the official spokesmen of an emperor or a king. Now we need to, to see that in their times, wala pang social media na sobrang dali na lang magbigay ng public announcements at may inform ng maraming tao. Wala silang ganong technology. So their way of announcing important matters from the king is through the imperial heralds. And these imperial heralds carrying with them the message of the king would go to the town squares where people are gathered. And with a loud voice, they will proclaim formally, seriously, and authoritatively the message of the king. Walang dagdag, Walang bawas. At pagkatapos ng trabaho nila, they will go back to the king para magbigay ng account kung naiproclaim ba nila ng tama at malinaw ang mensahe. It was also said from a commentary that, quote, the herald may not have been, uh, may not have liked the message he was to proclaim. Maaring hindi niya gusto yung mensahe. Or the people may not have wanted to hear it. And thus, the temptation for the herald may have been to change the message, to soften the blow, to spin the text. And this is the consequence kapag ginawa yun ng herald, all of which would have resulted in the herald losing his head. Unquote. Maaaring ikamatay ng isang imperial herald kung i-edit niya ang message ng king. Ganyan kaseryoso ang trabaho nila. And in the same way, Paul commands Timothy to be an official herald, not for any human king or emperor, but for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He must preach, and he must preach not his own words, but the word of God. And that's how solemn and serious Paul's ultimate charge to Timothy is. And knowing the essence of preaching is already sobering for Timothy. And maybe for, for the preachers. In addition to that, nagbigay pa si Paul in verses 2 and 5 ng maraming aspeto. Like for example, uh, he gave an, a supporting command uh, saying that a preacher must be ready at all times. 
At kailangan nandun din yung uh, different components ng preaching which is reproof, rebuke, exhortation, and teaching with patience. And the other supporting commands found in verse 5 gives focus to the character ng isang preacher that they should be sober-minded, enduring suffering, working evangelistically. And the last supporting command uh, is given to seal up all the previous commands that Timothy, as a preacher, must fulfill his ministry. And that basically means to faithfully do the main charge and all the supporting, supporting commands found in verses 2 and 5. Now, can you imagine how Timothy feels as he reads this charge from his imprisoned mentor? We can say that at this point, he already feels the weight of his responsibility. To preach God's word is a solemn duty. And there should be an equally solemn basis for Timothy or any other preacher in order for them to fulfill their ministry. And we can see that solemn basis in verse 1. It says there that Paul solemnly charged Timothy like someone who testifies under oath in a courtroom, in the presence of a judge. Now think of that level of seriousness. Only this time the judge is not a human judge, but God and Christ himself, the judge of the living and the dead. Ibig sabihin neto, bawat salita na bibitawan ni Timothy sa kanyang mga preachings ay dadaan sa omniscient scrutiny ng mga mata ng Diyos. At sa dulo ay huhusgahan siya. But this judgment is not a judgment of condemnation. Of course, we know na nakabase, hindi nakabase sa preaching or any good works ni Timothy ang salvation or condemnation niya. So what kind of judgment is this? It is a judgment of evaluation. Susuriin ng Diyos kung nag-preach ba si Timothy ayon sa paraan na nais ng Diyos. The judges evaluating eyes are watching the preaching of Timothy. At sa dulo, magkakaalaman kung ang kanya bang preaching ay naging pleasing sa harap ng Diyos. Ganyan kaseryoso ang trabaho ng mga preachers. Preachers will give an account for every exposition, every note, point, and challenge, every introduction and conclusion, every case and illustration, and yes, for every word and every motive, not to other human judge, but to God and to Christ. Preachers, do you see how serious, how dangerous your calling is? Do you see that the Lord evaluates our attitude towards the preaching of His Word? Nakikita at sinusuri ng Panginoon ang saloobin natin ukol sa pangaral ng Kanyang salita. And maybe you are thinking, anong attitude towards the Word ang pleasing sa Panginoon? And we have read earlier in Isaiah 66 verse 2, But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. According to this verse, the pleasing attitude that men should have before God and His Word is humility, contrition, and trembling, which is reverence. That must be our disposition before our majestic God. There should be no place for pride or indifference before God and His Word. At ang patunay na meron tayong mataas na pagtingin sa Diyos at sa Kanyang salita ay ang pagkakaroon ng kababaang loob sa harap niya. So if the Lord will evaluate our hearts today, the question is, will He be pleased? Dear preachers, this is a solemn reminder for you and me. In our preparations and in the actual preaching, never forget that the judge of the living and the dead is evaluating us. And to those who do not preach, maybe you are thinking, oh, this preaching is only for preachers. It's not for me. Brothers and sisters and friends 
the omniscient scrutiny of the Lord is not just limited to preachers. Since He knows all things, by implication, we can also say that the Lord looks at you right now, evaluating how you listen to the preaching of His Word. Nakaranas na ba kayo ma-evaluate? Sa school, nag-defend kayo sa harap ng mga professors. Sa work, possibly may mga monthly or annual evaluations from the higher-ups. Or maybe sa mga businesses, may prominent personalities na magbibigay ng reviews sa, pro sa products or services na in-offer mo. Oh, if you think of that initially, nakakatakot ang situation na yun. But at the same time, knowing that you are being evaluated gives you a sense of accountability. And because of that, you give your best. Now, ganyan ang response natin knowing na may ibang tao na mag evaluate sa atin. Now, brethren and friends, know that we are in a real-time evaluation right now. Not by any human, but by God Himself. He observes how we regard the preaching of His Word. And out of that truth, we encounter our first challenge. We are challenged to prize preaching by cultivating correct attitudes towards it. Isang paraan para pahalagahan ng preaching ay ang pag-cultivate ng mga tamang saloobin ukol dito. But are we cultivating humility and other virtues towards preaching? And how should this affect us as preachers and hearers? Now, dun muna tayo sa mga preachers. If you are a preacher, how can you cultivate virtuous attitudes? And the answer is, at least by diligent preparation and humble dependence on the Lord. Kung may kababaang loob ang isang preacher sa Word of God, you will study diligently and prepare well so that you can make sure na hindi lang mensahe na galing sa sarili mo ang ipipreach mo, kundi isang mensahe na galing talaga sa Diyos. At kapatid, hindi mo masisukure yan if you will be lazy in your preparation. But at the same time, on the other extreme, beware then mga brethren, baka naman sobra yung paghahanda natin at nandun na lang ang ating total dependence. Mali din na attitude, attitude yun towards preaching, isama natin sa preparation natin ang preparation ng ating mga puso. If the Lord looks at our hearts, will He see a man that is totally dependent on Him? Or we'll see a man who's merely dependent on his own preparation and notes. Brothers, the Lord evaluates not just the content of our notes, but also the content of our hearts. And to my brethren who hears gospel-centered, expository preaching week after week, Brethren, do you appreciate it? O baka masyado na tayong nasanay? Or do you have a humble attitude and response towards the preaching of the word? Or do we possess a proud attitude in the guise of being discerning? Yes and amen. Kailangan natin paganahin ang discernment natin tuwing nakikinig tayo ng preaching. Suriin natin kung tama o mali ba yung sinasabi ng mga preachers. But may we do that not to the extent where we've become so proud of our ability to discern truth from error and yet fail to discern the point why we discern truth from error. Bakit tayo binigyan ng abilidad ng Diyos to discern and know the truth so that we might know the truth about God in order to intimately know God and consequently worship God through joyful praise and grateful obedience. Is that a response in hearing the preached word? The problem is, 
hindi parating tama ang attitudes natin towards the preaching of the word? Ikaw ba yung preacher na tamad? Tamad mag-prepare? Or ikaw ba yung preacher na sobrang prepared ngunit hindi dumedepende sa Diyos? O ikaw ba itong hearer na proud sa ability mo to discern at nakalimutan mo ng sumamba at sumunod sa Diyos? The judge of the living and the dead knows you and me and our sinful attitudes. And He commands us to confess and repent of our sins. And brethren, be reminded that there is forgiveness for all these sins because the same judge who evaluates you is also the same judge who laid down His life on the cross, paid the penalty for your sins, and when He rose again from the, gra- from the grave, our judge became our justification so that you will not anymore face His judgment of condemnation and you may have the strength to be ready for His judgment of evaluation. Now, it was said that the golden age of preaching was at the time of the Puritans. Both Puritan preachers and hearers esteemed the preaching of the Word. Puritan preachers highly prized preaching. Dr. Joel Beakey commented on the Puritan preachers, and here's what he said, and I quote, The Puritans believed that a preacher should ascend to the pulpit each time, as if it were the first time, and might will be his last time, praying that it might be the best sermon he ever preached. Ang sabi din nila that preaching is the gift of all, of all gifts. And God esteemed it, Christ esteemed it, and so we should esteem it also. And to capsulize the, the, the preacher's high view of preaching, who can forget the famous quote of Richard Baxter? And I quote, I preach as never to sure, as never sure to preach again, as a dying man to dying men. Unquote. Pero hindi lang ang mga preachers, hindi rin nagpapahuli ang mga Puritan congregation when it comes to the esteeming of preaching. It was said that in the hearing of the preach word, they would all, uh, they would do all that they can to absorb as much truth as they can. And, and if ever they miss something that the preacher said, the Puritans believe that they must quickly ask God for forgiveness and bounce back in focusing to the preaching of God's Word. Then this congregation would, would bring their takeaways from the preaching, and throughout the week, they will review it and talk about it in, and its application in their family worships and other fellowships. Yun ang topic nila sa kanilang pagsasama-sama, ang preaching ng Word of God every Lord's Day. This Puritan preachers and hearers cultivated the primacy of preaching and the correct attitude towards it and may we follow their example by God's enabling grace. Additionally, there's another way to highly regard preaching, and that is by guarding its primacy, even if many will have a sinful dislike of it. And that leads us to our second point, the intolerance itching ears. The intolerance itching ears. In verses 3 and 4, may kita natin ang isang futuristic insight on how the people will respond to Timothy's preaching. Take note, brethren and friends, na ang mga taong tinutukoy in verse 3 and 4, these are people inside the church and not outside the church. Paul said that this time will come this season will come. Remember when Paul said na dapat mag-preach si Timothy in season and out of season? Ang season na makikita natin in verses 3 and 4 is one of the examples of out of season. Because it describes a dangerous time where faithful, exegetical, and gospel-centered preaching will be rejected and false teaching will be promoted. And here's how the Apostle Paul described the people who will reject faithful preaching. First, 
they will not endure sound teaching. That is to say, those who profess to be Christians will become so intolerant of healthy, or we can say, complete preaching. Maybe you are asking, bakit kaya hindi kakayanin ng mga tao yung preaching ng word? It is because a complete preaching will not just include uplifting encouragements and interesting doctrines. It will also include demanding reproofs and confrontational rebukes. And since we are sinners by nature, whenever na point out yung sin natin, we tend to sinfully respond by either passively evading it or by actively rejecting it instead of repenting of our sin. Not just will these people reject faithful preaching, they will also desire to replace the faithful preachers with false teachers. Nasakto yung turo sa panglasa at pagnanasa nila. Their ears will itch, will desire for a scratch, or more accurately, will desire to be tickled. Sabi ng isang commentary, ayaw nila ng messages, ang gusto nila mas suggest. And by the smooth and deceptive words from the lips of a false teacher, they will desire more and more to be tickled. Now, these people will accumulate false teacher upon false teacher. And with them, deception upon deception will pile up. And little will these people know that they've already turned away from the truth. And now they believe myths, lies that are against the scripture. But Paul, in spite of all this negative reaction to the faithful preaching of the word, his charge to Timothy remains the same, remains constant. Actually, mas nagbigay pa nga si Paul ng further supplements in verse 5 para, pag, para hindi pang hinaan ng loob si Timothy pag na-encounter niya ang mga bagay na ito. Timothy must stand firm, focus on his calling to preach the word in spite of these storms and waves of hostility against it. He must not give in to the pressure of the people to change God's message and even God's chosen method to deliver the message. Para lang ma-please yung mga tao sa paligid niya. This really is a very hard, or maybe more accurately, an impossible call for a human being apart from God's grace. Why preach if it's not popular? It is because the Lord's message and primary means for gospel propagation doesn't change along with the changing seasons. And that is the truth that we can see here. Preaching, which is the Lord's primary means for gospel propagation, is not tossed to and fro by the waves of the popular, uh, of what is popular in different eras. Now, have you tried to, to observe the different eras throughout the history? You see, every era has their own trademarks. From the music, to the style of clothing, from their mindsets to their way of living. I mean, just compare the differences of living in the 70s and 80s and 90s and so on. Each decade, each generation has its own signature. Ibat ibang panahon, ibat iba ang gusto ng mga tao. At ang temptation para sa isang preacher ay sabayan yung alo ng pagbabago ng panahon at ibahin ang mensahe o ang paraan na napili ng Diyos upang iparating ang mensahe niya. Huwag sana tayong mahulog sa ganyang pagkakamali, mga kapatid. Let us firmly believe that our God who, know, who knows all the seasons, who is not bound by time, and who is perfect in wisdom, chose the preaching of the gospel as His primary means to regenerate rebels and cleanse His church. And it remains regardless of its popularity or unpopularity. Why will we change the message and God's chosen method? He is infinitely wise, God. Bakit natin babaguhin yung paraan niya 
Are our ways higher than His? By no means, brothers and sisters. That truth confronts us today with the second challenge. We must prize preaching by embracing it despite of its unpopularity. Yan ang isa pang paraan para mapahalagahan natin ang preaching ng gospel. Let's uphold it. Kung dumating man yung panahon na hindi na popular ang preaching, or worse, kung may persecution man na mangyayari dahil sa pagsunod natin dito, wag nating luwagan ang kapit natin sa preaching ng gospel. Isa pang ibig sabihin niyan ay ang pag-reject natin sa anumang substitute sa preaching ng gospel. For example, so-called modern churches today seems to highly regard other things or invent ways to quote-unquote communicate the gospel. First, the confrontational nature of preaching is removed to accommodate more people. The talker is funny and fervent, but he is not faithful to the word. This pseudo-preaching resembles more of a TED Talk or comedy show with Bible verses. Also, the time for that talk is shortened and more time is given to other human inventions like concert-type performances, audiovisual presentation, group dynamics, aka small groups, and many more programs and techniques suited to the preference of the people. As if these human inventions can regenerate a dead soul and sanctify a struggling saint. But you may say, oh, we don't do that. We are reformed, covenantal, and confessional. Oh, dear brethren, we are not exempted from the temptation to replace the primacy of preaching. You may ask, how? Paano natin napapalitan ng preaching? Are you thankful for the podcasts? Online sermons? Online resources? Articles, books, commentaries? Are you thankful for it? Amen? Amen? And amen. But you see, brothers and sisters, those may be supplements, but they are not replacements for the weekly preaching in the local church. Be grateful and take advantage of this ocean of online resources that we enjoy, but never make it a substitute to God's primary and com common means for the sanctification of your soul, the preaching of His Word every Lord's Day in a local church. And if you are one of our guests today, and your life is dominated by either passive indifference to the preaching of the gospel, and or by the active rejection of it, if you love smooth-talking false teachers who tickle your ears, if you don't want to be confronted of your sin because you love your sin, O oh sinner, the Lord commands you today to repent of your sins and believe in Christ's perfect person and work that you might be forgiven and respond in true worship and obedience to Him. If you continually reject His pleas to repent and believe the gospel after preaching upon preaching upon preaching and you die in that state, then you will face the judgment of the judge of the living and the dead. Not for the judgment of evaluation, but for the judgment of condemnation. But you see, dear sinner, the judge is so patient and compassionate towards you. And here again today, he lets you hear yet another preaching and gives you another chance to repent and believe so that you'll escape the condemnation that you deserve. Are you still apathetic? Do you still reject this message in your heart? Maybe you're saying, Sino bang gusto na ma-reprove? Sino bang gusto na ma-rebuke? Who wants that? Well, the true Christian wants that. Not because they romanticize, romanticize hearing rebukes and corrections. No. They want their sins to be pointed out because the more we see our sins, the more we see God's compassion grace and power to save and if you're not yet a Christian we desire that you'll know our God come to him today by responding in repentance and faith in Christ alone and may God use the preaching of the word no matter how uncool no matter how unpopular it is to save your soul Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was one of the greatest preachers of the 20th century <clears throat> 
it was said that he reclaimed the practice of expository preaching in an age where it is not popular. According to Dr. Steve Lawson, at the outset of the ministry of Lloyd-Jones, he chose to preach at a church in South Wales. It is a small dying church of 93 people who tries to attract worldly men by worldly means. Like for example, drama performances, lotteries, and other fancy gimmicks. Pagdating ni Lloyd-Jones dun sa maliit na church na ito, napansin niya agad na yung pulpit ay nagagalaw. Pwedeng ilipat ng posisyon, pwedeng alisin sa gitna ng stage, para kapag may magpe-perform ng drama ministry, pwede silang makapag-perform ng maluwag. As a response to this foolishness, ito ang pinakaunang ginawa ni Lloyd-Jones. And I want to quote Steve Lawson. The first thing that Lloyd-Jones did was to nail the pulpit to the floor. And then he fired the drama team. And brothers and sisters and friends, kasabay ng pagkapit ng pulpito na yon sa gitna ng stage ay ang pagbalik ng centrality of preaching sa church na yon. Itinigil nila lahat ng worldly attractions and Lloyd-Jones simply preached the word of God faithfully and in the next few years, this church of 93 people grew to be hundreds upon hundreds. Martin Lloyd-Jones had a great confidence to the word of God and God's primary means to build this church, the preaching of his word. He embraced it in spite of its unpopularity in his time and may God enable us to do the same. May we seek to cultivate a high view of preaching by embracing it despite its unpopularity and also by being mindful that our Lord evaluates our hearts towards it. May the gospel of Christ propagate in and through CHC through His primary and chosen means, the faithful preaching of the Word of God. And, me, and may we, as, a, as the church, respond in fervent worship to the God of the Word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we don't deserve the least of your blessings. Lord, maraming beses that our attitudes towards your preaching is not right. Lord, forgive us. Forgive the preachers. Kung meron man kaming mga kasalanan laban sa, sa iyo at sa inyong salita. At ganun din po, Panginoon, if there are hearers today who have not uh, that, that right attitude towards preaching, Lord, we ask for forgiveness and cleansing from our sins. And Lord, tulungan niyo po kami na sumunod sa inyo. Tulungan niyo po kami, Panginoon, na igalang ang salita ninyo. At Lord God, yakapin ang napili ninyong, napili ninyong paraan para i, uh, ipalaganap ang inyong mensahe ng gospel. Tulungan niyo po kami and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.